Christ, we await his return. We light one candle to remember that as he came to us humbly in a manger at Bethlehem and gave light to the world, so he is coming again in power to deliver his people. We light this candle to remind us to be alert and to watch for his return. Let us pray. Lord, each fall our days grow short and our nights grow so long. We thank you that in the midst of darkness your light shines through. Help us to see and to recognize and be warmed by your eternal light and love. Amen. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Together, almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty, to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Please be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence, and from ages past no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you and your ways, but you are angry and we sinned, because you hid yourself we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our inequities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. 
Reading responsibly, Psalm 80. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Restore us, O God of hosts. O Lord God of hosts, You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have made us the derision of our neighbors. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand. And so will we never turn away from you. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Would you please stand as you are able for the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
in the name of the one who came. And the one whose spirit is among us now. And the one who one day will return. Amen. Please be seated. I don't know about y'all, but I hate to wait. Those of you who know me know that I am in a hurry everywhere I go and just about everything I do. Even waiting for Rita to get from the altar to read the gospel right there, I was impatient and found myself both convicted and inspired. This speaks to me this season, which we begin today. Please repeat after me, whether you're at home or in person today. Alleluia, he is coming. Alleluia, he is coming. Alleluia, he is here. Alleluia, he is here. This is the dichotomy that we face in the season of Advent. It's all about, you might say, time and how we think about it. As the cliche goes, it's about time. It's about time. I don't know about you, but the Ackridge clan was together for Thanksgiving. Since my father died five years ago in April, we had not all been in the same space at the same time. Even though we had tried, there was always something. And this year, in spite of COVID, but with all the precautions we could manage, we convened in southern Alabama in two counties, Baldwin and Mobile, for short bursts of COVID-aware fellowship and photographs and food. And that's the thing, isn't it, about Thanksgiving? Even if you yourselves were not able to be physically among the people you call family, I pray that you were able to connect, to laugh, to pray, and to encourage. In my case, whenever those kinds of visits happen, we go back in time, so to speak. Some things between brothers just never change. Of course, the jokes about my hair or the lack of it, and of course, the good-natured teasing about everything from our waistline to our fishing ability, but also between my three brothers and I, the laughter, our wonderful wives, the blessing of our children. And perhaps this year, the look in my mother's eyes, seeing all of us together with our children and our spouses, with cousins and friends, all who are there, you might say, only because of the love between her and my father. It's connected. It's connected. It's about time. For instance, I remember when I was much younger, even younger, much younger than my children are now. It seemed to me that it took an eternity to get from the end of summer to Christmas. I have the most vivid memories of the energy stored up in a sunrise summer Saturday morning when my feet propelled me out of my bed, out the door and into the dewy grass running towards a sunrise dock with a fishing pole in one hand and freshly dug worms in another. On those days, I carried with me the conviction that I was the fastest thing in my universe. Because time for me 
Well, it seemed that birthdays came around only once a decade. And December crawled toward Christmas like a glacier. But then I can also remember like it was yesterday. Carrying a thumb-sucking, footy, pajamaed, clad little girl down the hallway on my shoulder, snoring like only a three-year-old can to her bed because that same energy, that same energy that poured out of me when I was not much older than her, now poured the same way off of her. Those days with Evie and with Harrison and those nights seemed and seem like an eternity for me. But then when I switch gears and go to the other hand, is it me? Or can you, like me, relate that seems like someone moves Christmas up a month every year? And frankly, I think the same thing has happened from the same person, perhaps, to my birthday. Dr. Seuss said, how did it get so late so soon? How did it get so late so soon? And he's right. I don't know about y'all, but if it weren't for the gravity and the aches and the pains that prove the years have passed, as John Prine sings like a broken down dam, I'm not sure that I would believe I'm nearly old enough to have a sophomore in college or four cars in the driveway at Thanksgiving. But the mirror is a cruel truth teller, just as are my waistline and my knees and my hair, or the lack thereof. It seems like it's both in all of this. It's about time. You may wonder what this has to do with our scriptures today, but I, all of them are about time. They're all about when Isaiah sang, pleading for the Lord to tear open the heavens and to come down. They're all about time in Corinth when the church is encouraged to hold fast and wait for Jesus to be found blameless at his definitive coming. And it's about time when Jesus warns his disciples and all those in earshot to keep alert. It's about time. And I wonder in this season if we haven't missed it a little bit. And that's what the scriptures are aiming at. In light of those illustrations in these scriptures, maybe time isn't merely this linear thing that speeds up the older we get and steals from us the ones that we love. Instead of a cruel mistress that droops what was firm and slows down what used to be fast, instead of the harbinger of endings, what if we looked deeper and remembered that these scriptures and what the younger versions of ourselves knew intuitively. Every moment, fleeting as it is, is also an eternity. Every ending, for Christians, a beginning. That the memories of those we love have an eternal connection, not unlike salvation. That death cannot steal from us anything that is forever. And love is forever. That time itself is a creature just as we are created by God. And the only reason perhaps as he quipped was so that everything doesn't happen all at once. But in a way... This is what Advent is trying to remind us, I think. Instead of some march at the beginning going from birth to death, some line, what if time were more like the colors of
of our world. Lord knows the Israelites needed saving, but when Emmanuel came, they were so convicted that it was a line involving a warrior savior that they missed what was happening right in their midst in a barn in Bethlehem. The colors were there, but they were looking for the lion. This is what Paul is pointing to, I believe, at least in part, when he says, you're not lacking, holy friends, in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord. Can you see him? And perhaps this is why Jesus is virtually screaming at Peter and Andrew and James, who want to know where on the timeline are we? As someone gave me a bumper sticker that said, Jesus is coming. Everybody looked busy. No. 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 He implored them. Yes, it is all coming to fulfillment. We call that the fullness of time. But even in the midst of it, Jesus is saying, wake up. Wake up. Do you see? It is happening now, in front of us, Advent, my friends, is not an evacuation plan. It's a birth announcement. And when the Holy Spirit is involved, it's in the hand that you hold. It's in the gift that you share. It's in the kiss from a loving puppy who you weaned and cared for. It's in that barefooted fishing pole jaunt down the dock, and it's in that little three-year-old head lopped on your shoulder in footy pajamas. It's in that first note that he wrote to you 30 years ago. It's in the newness of a first Christmas together or the smile that she had that could light up a room. These aren't a timed march off this earth to a separate heaven out of this garbage heap called creation. No, no, they're revealing, uncovering a God that will not leave behind anything that he loves and is working in and through all of it. He is in the midst of us now if we are willing to see. Yes, COVID, yes, finals, yes, grades, yes, funerals, yes, challenges, but yes, love, yes, hope, yes, reconciliation, yes, birth, yes, dreams, yes, love. Now with staggering beauty and with boundless hope, grateful eyes and infinite hearts, Perhaps a last illustration I've been wrestling with is how can it both be already, as our theology says, but not yet? How can he be in the midst of us and yet still being born deeper into our hearts? When Harrison was really small, perhaps four years old, we had at our house this thing called Bed, Bath, and Beyond. And he was all scrubbed clean and he was tucked into his bed. And this was in the days when... The, your music player wasn't also your phone, and so I had one of those things called an iPod, and it had a thing called a click wheel, and it stored thousands of songs on it. Among them, a playlist for Harrison, all of his favorite songs, R.E.M. and U2 and Van Morrison and James Taylor, all the music that made up the soundtrack of his little timeless life. And one night we had these cords that came out of them and they split across and each of us had a set of headphones and we were listening about halfway through his playlist. His eyes were drooping and I looked over and I could hear him sniffling. And I saw those big tears rolling down his face as he listened to the music. And I paused it and I said, I'm so sorry. And as I wiped his tears, I said, what's wrong? And he said, oh, nothing. Nothing at all, Dad. 
These are happy tears. I don't know how time does both of those things. But I just know that it does. And when we have eyes to see Advent properly, it reveals to us, Alleluia, He is coming. Amen. And now, seated or kneeling as you are able, let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and for the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Frank, our bishop, Alan, our rector, and all St. Mark's clergy and lay leaders. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Donald, our president, Joe, our president-elect, Brian, our governor, Cornell, our mayor, and the leaders of the city of Brunswick and the county of Glynn. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there may be justice and peace on the earth. We give thanks for our life and ministry together here at St. Mark's, and especially our outreach ministries. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. We pray for John, Sue, Bubba, Barbara, Diana, Chris, Chance, Kevin, Barbara, Brent, Dan, Patty, Jeannie, B, Jeff, Brenda, and all doctors, first responders, and caregivers. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for those who have died this past week and those who have died as a result of violence, warfare, and the virus. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We ask your blessing on all those with birthdays and anniversaries this week, especially Sherry, Luke, Anne, Jim, Rich, Paul, Nancy, Jeff, Frazier, and Judy. We give you thanks. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and for those of others. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We do not love our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of his Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Would you please stand as you are able.
And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. you. Greet one another in peace, holy people. If you're in the same pew with somebody, feel free to give them a hug. Come on up, Sherry. I know you want to do that thing. God's peace for you guys. Y'all, please be seated. Again, it's a pleasure to welcome you if you are worshiping with us online. I happen to have gotten a text message that, uh, that Ashley and George and Michael on St. Simons have joined us today. So I'm giving them a shout out. We're so glad that they're here uh, with us today. But not just those holy people, but wherever you are and from wherever you hail. If you're vicariously worshiping with us this morning, God bless you, and we're glad that you are here with us. Uh, And the same to you holy folks that are in the pews today. We're so glad that you are here as well. You will notice today that we have returned to the high altar for the celebration of the Holy Eucharist. Um, We're going to try that today, and hopefully it'll work out well. We're still going to bring the Eucharist down here to you so that we can maintain that social distancing. But... But we're going to celebrate from the high altar, and we're honored and humbled to be able to do that again. We're working on being able to also provide uh, the blood of Christ as well. Uh, But we're aiming for uh, just a couple weeks down the road. Uh, We'll keep you posted. Also, beginning tomorrow, uh, actually continuing tomorrow, uh, if you're a member of St. Mark's Episcopal Church, consider yourself such you can pick up a ballot. Uh, You should have received both your slate of vestry candidates as well as the annual reports and all the information about our annual meeting, which is next weekend at 1015. Uh, But you can vote because of COVID-19 and the need for us to think creatively. You can stop by the church office between 9 and 3.30, Monday through Thursday this week, or you can pick up a ballot at your chosen worship service. For the Thursday folks, that's Thursday or Saturday night or Sunday morning. And then, of course, next week, Immediately following worship, we'll have our annual meeting, and this crowd, this crew, can pick up their ballots then. If you're watching online and you live in another state, but you say, you know what, I am a member of this church, and there are a few of those, please reach out to us via phone. We'll get you a ballot. We want you to be able to participate, and that's actually happening in some instances, and we're honored by it. Um, But just know, we want it to be as easy as possible and as challenging and beautiful and rewarding as possible for you to be a part of this parish family. Let us know how we can make that happen. Um, That's all the announcements I have. There's a few others in your bulletins. Walk then in love as Christ loved us. When we moved to the liturgy of the table, gave himself an offering and thanksgiving to God.
Would you please stand as you are able? And we are reminded that all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. During this season of Advent, we will move to Eucharistic Prayer B, which is found printed in your bulletins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. Because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you. Joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may be seated or kneel as you are able. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and the love which you've made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people and your word spoken through the prophets and above all in your word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior, the Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you are able to drink it again, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine, we pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by your Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, Put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Mark and all those we love who have gone before us, all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Amen. Friends, these are the gifts of God. Therefore, the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The people may be seated until time to come forward for the Eucharist. Let us pray. The eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage 
to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we finished last week's abbreviated St. Mark's 101 class, one of the phrases that kept coming up, which is connected to time, is called anamnesis. Anamnesis is a liturgical term that means to make the past present with power and with purpose. It's what we do when we break the bread and we don't say Christ our Passover was sacrificed, but is. It's what we see in those smiles and those holding hands and the eternity of each moment is pointing to something bigger. Something like, Alleluia, he is coming, and Alleluia, he is here. Let that blessed assurance, the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit go with you this season, be with you this season, and remain with you always. Amen. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Feel it? Thank you all. God bless you. We're so glad that you were here with us this morning. Take care. We'll see you next week.